Welcome to That Entrepreneur Life, a podcast about entrepreneurship that takes you from idea to launch and beyond. Beyond. Each week, your hosts, Andrew Lees and Clint McPherson, discuss different business topics aimed at adding value to any entrepreneur's journey. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. I'm Andrew Lees, and I'm here with Clint McPherson. What's up, man? How you doing? Not much, brother. Just excited to kick another episode off. Excited to be here with you and our special guest today. And and without further ado, let's welcome our special guest, Hani Mora, to the show. How you doing, brother? I'm doing awesome. How are you guys? Great, man. Yeah, we're, we're really excited to have you on the show. Appreciate you being here. And before we get into everything, can you uh, just tell us, tell our audience who you are and what you're all about? Yeah, my name is Hanny Mara. I've been, I'm a software, I call myself a software entrepreneur because I create software. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing for the past seven years and uh, software for automating content and all kinds of good stuff. But um, yeah, I call myself a software entrepreneur. I'm not sure if I made that word up or not. <laughs> I think I've never heard it before, but I love it. Yeah, I, th I think that's a, a great, you know, combination of, you know, a software engineer, software preneur. To you know, you can tell that you're focused on not just the the back end and the engineering and stuff, but you're focused on the the business part of it too. So I like get all of that in one word. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's I'm exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Hani, man, with, with a background in electrical engineering, right, and and now a softwarepreneur, right, that you just described yourself as, take us back to when your actual entrepreneurial journey started, and what is it about entrepreneurship specifically that led you to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, it started probably seven, eight years ago now, and um, it's funny because I've always been a video guy, love video. And I've had software skills and I just knew like I was blogging about video and, and it was fun. It's great. I was teaching. I love that. But I just had this moment where like, I need, it's just like a light bulb hit me. I need to create a software that's something to do with video, my passion and my skills. So like combine passion and skills. So that's, I didn't know what the idea was, but I knew it had to be video and it had to be a software for video creators. Uh, and then fast forward a few months later, I just kind of looked at what I was doing as a blogger and stuff. And then we built our first WordPress plugin. I got some help to build it, um, but it was a tool to solve my own problem, which was taking videos from YouTube, putting it on my blog, because I was doing a lot of blogging back then. And I hated that manual process. So it's kind of scratched my own itch kind of thing. And that's how I got kind of got into it. And that's and that was the beginning of, that was a very small, like foot in the door, but it was a great, great experience and great way to build experience to grow uh, you know, your entrepreneurial spirit because you got to start small before you can tackle on bigger projects. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, uh, I think doing it that way is, is a good way to do it. So you can build off of, um, you know, off your experiences and you starting small allows you to, to get in into something without, spending a ton of time and a ton of money, right? Um, I think some people as a product developer myself for physical products, not software, um, people come to me and with uh, some of them with really maybe awesome ideas, but they're, they're super complicated. And I'm just like, that's awesome. But like, that's something that like is on the level of, of like an Elon Musk to to handle with lots of resources lots of well maybe not time but lots of resources at least you know um, and i always suggest to people hey start out something start out with something that is is smaller in scope a little more cost effective to get to market and it doesn't you know it it, it can be simple and relatively inexpensive to get to market sometimes, but still be able to be scaled up. That's something too. Like I wouldn't suggest that somebody gets into something that has just not very much potential because you're going to get really frustrated. You might learn, you're going to learn about entrepreneurship. You're going to learn about launching a business. Um, it may not be that difficult to start and grow, but you're going to hit a ceiling pretty soon. So I always, I still recommend, Hey, find something that's, that's going to, you can launch relatively easily and grow it as it grows. 
Right. Absolutely. I mean, that was how we started too. Like I started by solving one problem. Like I would say, hey, just let's solve one problem, build a small tool that does this, put it out, get feedback. Uh, and and it evolved. Like the one first software, we, we're up to like five or six different softwares now. But the first one was just a simple tool that does one thing. And then we evolved from there into a second tool and a third tool and a fourth. And now we have a whole platform that does a lot of automation. So like you don't go from like step one to step 100 in one shot. That was like a seven year uh, iteration. And a lot of it is listening to customers. Uh, like for, at least for us, for me, it was like putting something out, getting feedback, saying, oh, this is great. Oh, can you do this? Okay, let's build a second tool that does that. And then eventually by listening to customers over the four or five years, we ended up building the platform that we have now called Repurpose. It was over probably four or five years of getting feedback from customers from our other softwares telling us, we love what you're doing here. Can you take it to the next level? Um, so it's like start by solving one problem and then always listen to customers, even if it doesn't align with your vision. Uh, some people like have a, they have their vision that okay, we got to do this, but then that's great. But if customers don't really need that, they want something like this slightly off. You need to listen. You need to be a little flexible, especially in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it helps you grow and it helps you and it helps you continue to, again, f empower your customers, right? Like you're, you're great. You're great in this area, but can you, can you tweak it to this? And then, and then it's just, it helps you expand and it helps you keep and retain individuals that might leave you because you don't do that. Right. Um, or your software might not be able to accomplish exactly what they want. So man, that you just lost a customer. But if you are listening to them and you're making those changes and you're in, and, and so as entrepreneurs, man, we can be all guilty of going from step one to a hundred and throwing it all out there at the same time and falling flat on our face without you, without having that slow step process, right? You got to learn how to crawl right before you walk. You got to learn how to walk before you run. And it's the same way with entrepreneurship, just going back to the basics, even taking it back to being a little kid, right? A little baby, like just look, right? It took you, it took processes and it took time to evolve into what you are today. It's the same process with entrepreneurship and it's the same process within software that you built, right? I mean, again, repurpose, man. I was telling every, I was telling um, Honey Offline guys that I mean I met I met him at Podfest 2020 recently before this whole you know pandemic hit and and shut down the world and, and man it was like it, something drew me to you right because I was like man if if I could figure out repurpose that out what is this I wanted to find out more and man just 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 hearing hearing your story and and just getting to talk to you for a little while kind of encouraged us like man if he can make this easier for us because we just started our podcast i think we recorded like two or three episodes before i went and then i was like man this is going to help alleviate so much pain so much you know time and it's just going to give me more free time to do what i need to do and focus on the content instead of figuring out how to place it in places man and it just blew my mind and and i love what you've done with it man I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I mean, like I said, it's all driven by by our customers, and uh, and it's funny because when I started my software journey <laughs> seven years ago, I mean, people say, "Hey, start with an audience." And so I didn't have an audience. I didn't have a lot of people. But uh, one one tip I would give anybody who's starting off who doesn't have an audience is, I mean, try to build one up front. But if you don't have that, partner up with somebody, and that's what I did. I partnered up in the beginning. Um, but I guess what happened is after I partnered up, I got kind of my name out there slowly, slowly. Uh, I started going to conferences, something I never, I never did before. I started going after first, second year and I started meeting people, meeting customers and man, that, that face to face time, I'm, obviously nowadays it's, it's, it's not an option, but this is limited, but in general, like face to face time, one-on-one -on -one conversations, and then treating your customers like friends. Like that was to me. It wasn't like intentional. It wasn't like a strategy. Oh, I'm going to treat them as friends so they can buy my stuff. No, it just it became friends. And I love going to these podcasting conferences. Every year, I would go one or two of them and just say, hey, I'm going to go hang out with my friends and go have a beer, play pool. I, it wasn't customers. Um, and when you treat people with that kind of level of respect um, and like friendship, it, it helps. And if you look at your customers as friends, not as numbers or dollars, it's, it makes a big difference. Uh, and of course, you got to love what you're doing, like the like repurpose idea. It's almost like this is my dream tool. 
like some seven years ago, I, I, I this is a tool I wanted to have. Uh, so I was very passionate about the idea. Um, so it really helps when you're, when you're excited and, uh, and you treat people like, like humans. I, you, I mean, we're all humans, right? You treat, treat customers like, you know, like friends. Oh yeah. Big yeah. difference. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, people are more likely to, to recommend your, your product or service. If you can connect with them, they're like, Hey, I know this great guy, you know, he has this company <clears throat> repurpose.io. You have to check it out. You know, I mean, he just, it, it just, yeah, it makes it so much, so much more personal. And if you feel as a customer, like you're being heard and understood and, and actually, um, if you feel a connection to the company, in any way, even a large company, you know, um, I think if you can just feel like, Hey, I know that they're huge and I don't know anybody there personally, but they make me feel like I'm part of this whole thing. And, you know, and I, you, you actually address my next question about, um, kind of, a you know, about, uh, getting, getting the, your product out there and testing it and, you know, getting feedback from your, from your customers, you talk about pre-selling a product or service before you spend a ton of time and money on it. Um, and so, it, you know, it sounds like you, you, you kind of maybe did that a little bit, um, to, you know, at least to get it out there. Did you give it away for free for a while? Did you pre-sell it? How did you do that? Yeah. So, um, the first, first soft before repurpose. And when I first got started, I partnered with somebody cause they had the right audience for me. And then the second software, um, that we released after I kind of took it over and wanted, I wanted to be more in control of the marketing and the audience. Um, so we built a few tools in the WordPress space and it's with same, same types of customers as repurpose. Uh, so I started building my, uh, my audience slowly, but when we launched repurpose, um, it was about four years ago now, like the main software now, I said, okay, this is a new idea. Who do I, who do I talk to first? So I went to my existing customers who were buying my other products. And I said, listen, we're launching a whole brand new platform. Um, I'm doing a webinar. It wasn't ready yet. It was like maybe 89, 80%, 75% built. And I'm like, I'm going to do a demo, give you a sneak peek. If you're interested, um, you can pre pre sign up. Uh, and pay a few hundred bucks just to kind of secure your spot. Um, so we did that and we, we basically said, we got 25 people to kind of pitch in some money and say, all right, I'm, I'm in, count me in. And of course we said, if you don't like it, it'd be ready in six months. So like we said, six months from the time you pay, it'll be ready. And um, you will, if you don't like it, you get your money back, it's no big deal. So that gave us, kind of, it was, that's our form of validation. Uh, that's the first time I did that with our main platform. So I went to my existing customers who already knew that they liked our stuff. But more importantly, I said, uh, before I finish building this thing, let's have one or two features working and let's see if people are willing to pay for it. Um, so we ended up pre-selling. We gave people uh, access early. And then as a once we launched it and then we got some traction going, as a thank you, I just said, hey, you know what? You're, you're a lifetime customer. You don't have to pay ever again. So like, so the first 25 people or so they got a lifetime account for free with that very small investment as I mean, it's courtesy, right? They, they took the risk, not the risk, but they, they, you know, they put faith in me and then it was a small thank you back to them and, and they appreciated, I appreciate it. It was a win-win for everybody. Yeah, definitely. And they're giving you feedback. That's, that's valuable. So yeah, that's yeah awesome. we did. And we also do one-on-one calls. So like those 25 people, we did a one-on-one hour walked them through the demo. Um, they gave me all the feedback. I had notes. I remember like pages of notes and <laughs> so valuable as an entrepreneur in general, getting feedback from your users is so valuable. And uh, so that's kind of one of the reasons I said, you know what, these 25 customers deserve a lifetime account, like just for their time and their, yeah. and their trust. Yeah. You, you talked about, um, I thought it was really interesting. You were talking about not starting something without a list. Cause I think a lot of people can, um, can relate to that. You know, they're, they're starting something out and they're like, Hey, I'd love to get feedback, but from who, you know? Mm. And so, yeah. you, you know, you talk, there's obviously ways of building a list and, you know, you just start small yourself, but, um, it sounded like you, you made an interesting move to partner with somebody who already had an, an audience. Uh, yes. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, that was my first time, like, 
my first time building my first software, I'm like, all right, I have this thing. It's awesome. And to be honest, it kind of happened organically. So it's not like I like targeted somebody say, Hey, I want to partner with this guy. I mean, you can do that. And I think it's, it's great if you have a relationship or an opportunity, but for me, the story was, I was, I was building the software tool and I was doing some video editing on the side, just kind of like for fun. And then I was in some Facebook group and somebody, the owner of the group said, Hey, I'm starting a podcast. I want someone to edit my videos, this and this. So I raised my hand. I said, yeah, I'll help you out. No problem. So anyway, so I was helping him launch and edit his podcast. This is like seven, eight years ago. And then I, one day we were on a zoom call together. I'm like, or sorry, not zoom. It was Skype call. And then I said, Hey, let me show you something I'm working on. So I showed him like this little tool that we were building with my first software. And he's like, oh, wow, this is phenomenal. I have the right audience. You know, I, I sell courses for YouTube. You have a plugin for YouTube. Let's part, show me more. And we started talking and we partnered up. So it kind of happened organically. Um, and then he had like, he happened to have the right audience and we did okay. Like we did well, but to me, it wasn't the money that was, that was the value for me. The value was, let me, put something out to the world to enough people. Um, and we did it in stages, by the way. So it's like people who are like, I was nervous. I'm like, Hey, this launched to a hundred people. Let's make sure we don't like have a thousand bugs in here that, you know, we take down people's websites, you know, cause it's WordPress, you know, something can happen. Right. So we launched to a hundred and then we got, you know, I should know we did a beta for 25 people. We got a lot of feedback. So that was the first sign. Hey, free, we gave it to for free. People got feedback. Good. Then we sold it to hundred. Then we got more feedback. Then we learned that we, we need to hire somebody for support because the support issues were coming in. So then we hired support and then we launched another hundred. So we did it gradually. And at the end of the day, the lesson learned was amazing. Like the support that we need, the tools we needed to help the customers. If we just went, okay, let's sell a thousand copies. Now we would have been just a, your reputation goes down, especially in the beginning, you don't have someone to support it. Yeah, we learned a lot in the process. So take your time, like I, any business, do it in stages because especially if it's your first time, right? Now I've launched software for many times. So I'm, I know the process, we had the team around me now. So it's not as scary for me, but in the beginning, you need the first time doing it, you need to do it slowly. Uh, so yeah, I kind of talked about two things. So yeah, partnering up to help you get some value, get uh, in front of the right people is definitely one strategy. Um, you may make less money because you're sharing the profit, but that's okay, right? It's not about the money. It's about getting your product out and getting your brand and your name out there. And then second, do it incrementally. Don't just say, hey, I have a new tool or new hardware or new software, whatever, a new product, and I want to get it to a million people at once. No, do it. Get it to a few hundred at a time and then iterate, uh, get the right support team. Uh, sorry, support system behind you, whether it's support team, whether it's, you know, more business, whatever it is, get your, get your ducks lined up and then launch it to more people. Yeah. I think it's about that vision, you know, like you, like you said, it's like, you got to kind of see the long game. And as entrepreneurs, if you're not looking long-term and you're always short-term, you're always going to be fighting things at the last minute. You're not really having that vision for, for the long end. And it's like, Hey, I need an audience like, look, this is the stars align. I partnered up with somebody perfect. You know, I'm able to pull a couple of people, not really trying to take away from this guy, but I offer something that he doesn't. Right. Or, you know, even if it's partner, we offer it together. But when I do my own thing or I do launch my own and, and it becomes its own entity and I can kind of move away from here when I do come up with something that's more, you know, the shot groups tightened up on or more powerful then and I want to be in control of my own marketing, like you said earlier, um, it, it's one of those things that now you have a core people that you can reach out to core people that have been following you and understand you've earned that trust already. So then you, it's easy to pull 25 people and say, hey, guys, I got this software. You can be the fat, like the beta users, the founders of this program. You're going to get a lifetime access, um, but I just need your feedback. And, and, and launching in stages and having that game plan and doing it that way structurally, I mean, it makes so much sense, but people don't see it that way, right? When you get in the trenches, sometimes you just want it out there. You want a million people to do it. But then, like you said, if you don't have a team built out around you, which everybody's like, oh, I forgot that. Like now you have all these support issues. Now it's a nightmare. Now you're depressed. Now you're struggling. Now you're trying to figure out how to save your reputation because it's, it's, it's in the process of burning right now. Right. 
So man, so man, I love the I love that whole vision and I love what that 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 key nugget of advice that you put out there. Yeah, and one small kind of add on to that is uh, when I launched Repurposed, I somehow somebody introduced me to somebody at AppSumo. So they were like, "Hey, let's do a do a lifetime deal. You get a lot of people." And I was like excited at the idea, but really nervous. I'm like, "We don't have the infrastructure. We have the support team and stuff, but this is still new. Like we haven't flushed out all the issues yet." So I, I ended up turning it down. And I said, no, I'm not, I don't want to do an, a lifetime deal. I'm not ready. And I'm glad I did. I mean, our, I'm sure we could have got like thousands of users overnight, but it would have probably hurt us. Like our systems probably would have went down the support, like the reputation would have went down. So we weren't ready for that, uh, to do that. And I'm glad. So I was more about the, like I said, the long game, taking time to do it incrementally build a bigger team, add more features, get more users, build a bigger team. So like gradually, so that it's stable and it doesn't burn down. And then to be honest, you know, we had moments in the beginning and where things just, you know, so with software, there's a million pieces, servers, databases, whatever, whatever stuff goes wrong. And you're like, you have hard days sometimes. You're like, oh my goodness, like well, it's exhausting. But like, if you have that passion, like, like this is my baby excuse me, this is my baby. Like, I know, I know, I believe in this. I, I want this to keep going. I want this. So you kind of, you do what you got to do. But if you don't have that passion, if you're in it just for the money, like, all right, I'm going to make some money and get out in a few years. Then you like, when you hit a, a roadblock like that, then you're more likely to just say, ah, oh, it's not worth it. I'll go do something else and make money. There's a million ways to make money, but I'm doing this because I'm really passionate about it. And that helps you get through the tough times. Yeah, especially wanting to help your customers, which it sounds yeah. like you're uh, passionate about that, which is which is awesome. You know, I mean that that's going to get you through a lot if you if you're focused on the customers and making them them happy and coming out with this product like it was your dream product and you knew that there were other people out there who it was probably their dream product too. And if you're you know, treating them like you would want to be treated by any company, then man, that goes a long way. Yeah, it does. It makes a big difference. And uh, of course it takes time though, right? As an entrepreneur, you're like, I want to scale. I want to hit, you know, yeah, hit yeah. thousands and hundreds of thousands. For sure. Yeah, yeah. You'll get there. Of course, you'll have more automation systems. But in the beginning, you got to like, it's almost, it's a lot of non-scalable work and effort. Like I've had Definitely. meetings, I've had Zoom meetings with people and calls in the beginning and, you know, I do my best, but then at some point, once you get bigger and things are more stable, then you build courses and videos to, to teach people. So you're still you're still serving your audience, but uh, in the beginning, just don't worry about scaling. Just do what you got to do to keep the customer happy, get get feedback from them, and keep them and keep them going. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, to add on to that, what has been like the most effective growth mechanism for you for repurpose? And and can you walk us through that? Because I know you've mentioned, you just mentioned courses, right? So you have to have a staircase method to where, okay, repurpose might be your lead in product. Like what, what is allowing you to continue to grow and what's your growth mechanism is like? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, we haven't focused. It's weird because I'm a, I'm a technical person by nature and I'm a content creator by nature. So I love like, oh, what else can we integrate and more features? So I've been very heavy on the integrations and features and automations and making people's lives simpler that we haven't spent a lot of effort until like literally this year. This year, I'm like, this is the year, like starting in November, we started putting things in place. Um, it's been organic. Like, I mean, I'm very fortunate. It's been organic, word of mouth, a lot of podcast interviews. I mean, I'm in the space where my customers, a lot of them are content creators, podcasters or live streamers or video creators. So I'm always, you know, a lot of times invited to people's shows or to speak in their Facebook groups and talk about content and demo the software. So a lot of it grew organically through me, through interviews, through talking to different people. And then through customers, just having a good experience and sharing it out. And then I, we have an affiliate program as well um, that it's, just, it's not much, but it encourages people to um, just talk about it more and share their affiliate link. So we built the courses. We built a course uh, late last year uh, and it was designed to help you get the most out of repurpose um, because we got a lot of feedback saying people didn't know how to the software is amazing and they see all the videos and demos and they get excited when they get into it. They're like, oh, I'm not sure how to really get the most out of it. So we built that course to serve our existing customers. Um, but there's a plan this year is to take that course or, or a condensed version of that course and help and see if we can use that 
to bring in new customers. So it'd be like a course where you sign up, it's a free course, you get a free trial with the software, you kind of follow along, you, you know, you build your workflows. And then if you like it, then you can sign up. So initially we've been very focused on serving customers, but as of November, uh, up to now, like we're focusing on, okay, now let's, let's be more, um, what's the word, like more, like more, use more tactics to grow. Uh, organic is great, the best way, um, but it's, you know, people naturally talk about it and share it, but we need to have some systems in place. And one of the ideas is to get that course out to uh, the free course out to people along with a trial. So, I mean, here's the course, here's a trial. And then at least you will help you get value in, during your trial. And then if that's something that works for you, then you can upgrade uh, to one of our accounts. And would that content be, would the idea be that, you know, putting that content out there helps with organic, you know, searches, people looking for that kind of thing. And they're more likely to, to come across that content organically? Yeah, organically, but I think we're gonna have to run some ads to it and see, like we'll probably do some targeted ads, say, hey, if you're a content creator or a podcaster, uh, you're looking to distribute your content, uh, here's a free course and a free trial of our software to see if this works for you kind of thing. So yeah, we're gonna get into the paid ads space uh, this year as well. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be organic and also just creating content. It's, I'm trying to be more active in creating more content. Um, we do our monthly training calls, which is a form of content, but it's just once a month. I want to do more like smaller type of content, just be more active. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things in the pipeline. We've improved our support. We found like support was not available. We added live, like it's available by email, but sometimes you just want an answer right away. <laughs> like, hey, I'm stuck here. So we added the live chat. We just launched that actually about a week a week ago a week and a half ago so now there's somebody available during certain hours that you can just message chat even have a voice call with them so we're always we've been so focused on improving the experience that's kind of been our theme since november until january is let's improve the user's experience and then um, make sure that the customer is getting onboarded properly like once they sign up are they getting i do they know we have this training do they know this you know just get more stuff around that we haven't, you know, I, I'll be, I'll, I'm guilty of it because I'm a techie and I'm a content guy. And I'm, we've been so focused on like, let's integrate YouTube and Facebook and integrations and doing all this cool stuff with the software. And it does add a lot of value, but we haven't been focusing on realizing like, Hey, people sometimes don't really know how to use the software very well. Um, like the resources are not easily available to them. It's all there. Just they don't know where to find it. Right. So exactly. That's what we added the live chat. We it, added a link to the course and right. It took me a little yeah. while to find the resources, but once I found it and watched the videos, it's very intuitive. And then also, I think I stumbled upon, or because I'm obviously a member of Repurpose, right, and and we signed up for it um, for our podcast. I got that free course. I want to say that you did with Doc Williams. I don't know if it's yeah. still free, but initially, oh, it's still free. Yeah. But when you still teamed up with them, it was like some ninja marketing, whatever it was. But it, it taught you how to really integrate what's going on and like really gives you like how to build things out. And that's how I built my stuff, dude. Like I went, I put like, I have two screens in front of me, right? I'm one monitor, I had the course going. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to build these flows. And, and then I use that and man, it, it, it it was free. It helped. I didn't, and I think the next staircase method was something paid that you and doc Williams, I think further went further on and did, but I basically had everything set up and I just never really spent time to go down and see exactly what else was being added with the paid version, but it's definitely something I'm going to go and visit. But I mean, man, the value you added there is like hands down, probably more than, than you should have, right? Because the tool is already easy to use and you already got the videos to say, hey, this is how you do it. But man, when you and Doc teamed up and, and it was, it gets the wheels turning in your head as a content creator and like, man, this is a, Doc said, you can use this for here or, hey, I don't know, can you use this? And like, let's try it. And it was like, man, this is gold, man. So I really yeah. appreciate you putting that out. Yeah, no, I, we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears. I remember like, I was exhausted after making those like training videos, but it was like, I needed to make it short, but also detailed so that 
you literally, you can do it yourself. Or if you have someone on your team say, Hey, here's the videos, follow it step by step. Here's how to do from podcast to Twitter. And here's a podcast to LinkedIn and blah, 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 like step by step, the strategy, and then the execution all in one course. So yeah, that course has been so valuable uh, in a sense that it helps our existing customers really get the value out of our tool. Um, so that's, that's really, you know, again, like I said, we've been focusing on getting value to our existing customers. So we might take that course and make it into that, that like part of that course would get bundled into a, a kind of a, like a lead magnet for future customers. That's our strategy is to take the existing course, shrink it a little bit. It's a bit long right now, but we shrink it. We give a free trial and say, here's the videos, just walk through this and Try it yourself or if, if they know. do that, man, it's basically a no brainer, brother. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, they, it's like, I'm giving win. you, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Go ahead. You're going to be successful with this tool. <laughs> Boom. You're going to, you're going to convert so many people that way. I really think. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you, I believe la- so you've, too. yeah, you've laid the, you've laid the, the ladder right there in front of them to crawl up it, man. And I think once, yeah. once they watch those videos, it's like, I'm at the top, bro. I'm good. Yeah. You know? That's so. it. Yeah. You gotta, gotta get the customers a win and here's the tool and here's the blueprint. Just follow follow the recipe and uh, you know yeah and, up and, and having them, yeah having them be more <clears throat> you know if they know if you know how to use it you're going to be more active on it you know so the more active users you have that's that's the key right so you're going to get uh, more referrals more reviews more all that stuff like it's it's yeah it's fine to have you know if it's uh it's kind of one of those things where it doesn't really matter if they're they're active like a gym <laughs> you know you want to just have as many people as possible or, you know, co-working space. They're like banking on the fact that most people don't show up. They don't actually use the product. They're hoping that most people don't. Otherwise their whole model would crash. But for you, it's, it's so important for the, the more people who are, are with it and understand it and know how to use it, the more they're, they're going to be like, Oh man, this software is great. It, it's so useful. They've got great training tools they make it so easy to, to figure this out so that's that's going to make it i think that's going to help grow it for sure yeah and i mean that's all from like kind of stems back from the feedback discussion we talked earlier it's like people were telling us this is great but i don't know how to use it or i'm not sure how to use this or how do i do this and then we realized we have bits and pieces but we don't really have a course that says hey step one step two step three so that's why we that was something i wanted to really build and we, I built it with doc and it just, it kind of, things just happened. Like it, things lined up and we partnered up and then I built the technical stuff. He talked about the strategy and we put that course out and the feedback has been amazing. Like, just like you said, like people like, wow, I could, a, I didn't realize I can do so much and B it's awesome that I can just follow this or just give it to somebody in my team. Say, Hey, yeah, you just follow the steps and just set it up exactly like in this video. Um, and there's no, uh, it's great. I really so, think yeah. the time the timestamp feature, though, man, yeah. that's the thing. That, that's the thing that gets me pumped up, man. Because you can record, you can have this long ass video, or mm-hmm. this thing that's just so like. But you want to pull nuggets out of it, and you're like, where do I start, right? But if you know like specific time hacks that you like, ask the question, right, to where mm-hmm. I'm asking you something, or I'm asking somebody else that we've recorded with. And, you know, after you have your your um, show notes, whatever it is, and you just make sure whoever's doing your show notes, make sure they get those important, you know, nuggets in there for you. So once they give you those timestamps or, you know, the timestamps and can keep up with them, man, it's like you can produce so much content just with that one feature, man. It, blow, it blew yeah. my mind learning that because yeah. I was like, what? All we got to yeah. do is this. And now I can have 30, 40, however many pieces, however many timestamps you throw in there, you can have that many pieces of content. I mean, and that content. really, that really took it to the next level for me, man. Yeah, no, I love that feature. Like I love those little things that you could do, like you do one time and then you get like a ton of value out of it. Like it saves you a ton of time by doing it upfront. You know, you watch the audio, you jot down a few timestamps or your editor does it, whoever does it, you put it in one place. And then, you know, our software will just, oh, timestamp, boom, I'm going to make the clips for you here and make the clips for you here. And it just saves you a ton of time from doing it manually. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. And it's good to know that, that you guys are actively improving your product too. You yeah. know, that makes, that makes people feel good about it, especially if, you know, if you're paying a, a monthly subscription, it's like, you know, you, you want to use, even if it's was frozen in time and it stayed the way that it is today 
you know, it'd be super valuable and people would pay for it month after month, um, you know, forever, but it's, it's such a bonus to know that you're also actively improving it and wanting it to be the best it can be and taking in feedback into consideration with uh, feature yeah. updates. So uh, I love that. Yeah, we just added a button that says request a feature. We just added that a few months ago. Nice. So you can click a button, it'll take you here and say, hey, you can just request features. I mean, obviously we can't do every single request, but right, right. And then people can upvote or downvote, like, hey, I like this feature or not. And then this is going to help us drive our roadmap. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah, it all kind of, it, it all goes back to like, just listen to your customers. Like in any business, I know it says, you know, it sounds very cliche, but it's like you're building something not for yourself, it's you're building it for your audience. So if they tell you what they want and a lot enough people ask for the same thing, yeah, it's easy. Your roadmap becomes easy. Yeah, uh, you gotta you know exactly gotta what to, to do. That. That's awesome. So through your entrepreneurial journey from the highest to the lows, what has been the most difficult thing for you about entrepreneurship? Um, a couple of things. I guess one is knowing when to stop, <laughs> like when to end the day and say, all right, my day is over. Um, you know, spend time with the family, the kids and stuff. Um, in the beginning, it was very difficult because I loved it. Like, again, like, I don't feel like I'm working. I'm like, I'm building, we're doing all this awesome stuff. So yeah, drawing the line of like work time versus personal time, especially when you work from home. Um, and then the other thing was like in the beginning, it was just like finding the right team, like building the right team. Uh, the first time I tried to build my first software, I, I hired somebody and he was just, it didn't go well. I lost a lot of money, like not a lot. I lost some money and got nothing in return and I got demotivated. And it's just like, man, why am I doing this? I mean, I can code it, but it'll take me so long. Let me hire somebody, but how do I know if they're going to deliver? So yeah, at the beginning it was just rough, but then getting, once you start getting to find the right people on your team, a lot easier. Like once you get the one person in there and then you add a second person. So find the right people on your team and then also growing your team because you could do everything. Um, but it's just not, it's just not, it's not healthy for you. And then it's, it's not efficient. Like you're not going to be focusing on the right things. Uh, uh, so this year I'll have a goal. Like, like I said, I'm a very technical person. So my goal is to, I've built my team enough now where I can step away at least half my time or 75% of my time away from the technical so I can focus more on the strategy, the courses we need, the uh, more like on the just like business business side of it, marketing side of it, and also just like customer side of it, not less on the technical side of it because our team has grown enough where they're um, self-sufficient, I guess. Um, so yeah, so it's just knowing your skills, focusing on them and uh, just getting help. That really, that's that's the plus side of what came out of uh, learning that you can't do everything yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You really can. Even if you can uh, actually do everything yourself, like, you know, I think, I think we all kind of sometimes fall into this trap of, Oh, I can do that. And I'm going to save some money by doing it myself. But then you, then your business can easily flatline because all of a sudden you spend days figuring something out that you could have offloaded to somebody else. And you're not focused on everything else in your business, including the development of it, you know, and growing it. And I've definitely been there where I'm like, uh, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense for me to, to do this, even though I can, let me find somebody who's, who's good at it. And that's hard too, is to find somebody who you trust to, to do the level of, of work that you want. Um, but you also have to understand it's not going to be perfect, you know? And, uh, I've seen some, I've seen some companies where, uh, the owner, like one in particular I'm thinking of, um, uh, they make neurosurgical scalpels, totally different than software, but it's like one dude and he's a super nice guy. Um, but he can't give up any control. And, and, uh, so he's got a nice little business for himself, but he has the opportunity, I think to at least 10 X is, is his business. And, but if he, if he was partnering with the right people, if he was growing his team, if he was able to, you know, give up a little control and you just have to, you know, somebody, the, somebody else isn't going to do it exactly the way that you would. And, and that's okay. They might do it better, you know, but if you're micromanaging and nitpicking over every little detail, like you're just never going to grow. So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah, that's some great advice. 
you know, I'm still guilty of it. I mean, it's hard. Like you said, it's hard. Like sometimes I still yeah. kind of get in there and micromanage a little things and cause I do it a certain way, but yeah. like you said, I'm learning to let go and say, okay, it's done. It's not done exactly the way I would do it, but it's done. It's yeah. good. It's served its function. And let's move on to the next thing. And we'll try to do it better the next yeah. time. Like there's no That's point the going back and fixing things. You just get better every as you go forward. Yeah, you can always improve and tweak things. And that's the beauty of software, I think, right? Um, you really can improve and tweak things on the fly. So yeah. um, instead of with physical products, it's a mm. little harder because you, know, you, you really are like, your product is, fr is frozen in time, literally until you, you know, until you maybe make new molds, you, you know, so you change your tooling, your process, whatever. But um, that is one of the, as much as I love, I do love physical, tangible products. I, I'm really super interested in software because of how, how flexible it is. It's not easy, but at the same time, you can, you have something you want to change about it, go in there and change it. And yeah. like within minutes, you're, you know, you're up and running. So, yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, I, that's one thing I love about software is like, like I said, it's a flexibility of it. Uh, especially when you're starting up, you you need to be flexible. You're doing this and then you're like, oh, let's put the team on and let's build this feature. Okay, let's build that feature. You, you're still flexible because of software, you can just push updates out. You know, I don't want to make it sound simple, but it's relatively, relatively simple compared to, you know, like you said, changing molds or doing something that's, that's, you know, that takes months or who knows, like it takes a long time. Um, with, with software, it's like in a day, I can have something out if it's a bug or if it's a, Hey, let's just change the way this looks or add a help button here or launch a live widget like boom it's done like and i can have it done in a day so relative to hardware it's much easier and i love the flexibility um, but yeah it definitely it's every business has its pros and cons so i mean i mean one advice i give to people i give it to my one of my best friends recently he's he messaged me he's like i'm thinking of building a software i'm like don't do it <laughs> The reason why I say that because he's not a technical person and, uh, you know, he had a great idea. He's like, oh, this is a great idea. I'm using this tool, but it's not doing it the way I want to do it. He's in the coaching space, consulting space. I want to build a tool that does it better. I'm like, yeah, software is not like about building something one time and it's done. You need to build, you need to iterate, you need to update servers and update versions and update uh, security. Like security hackers, especially nowadays, are very high and very active and it's a, it's a it's an ongoing thing you can't just build a software put it out there and say okay see you later i made some money uh you got to support it ongoing maintenance even if you're not building features you still got to maintain and maintain servers have a support team on staff so if you're not all in i don't recommend and and if you if you're not technical you need to get somebody who's technical maybe a co-founder or somebody who who can just manage that that whole side of it because it's it's a, it's a big part of the business is like the stability, the development cycles, the, the security maintenance, et cetera. So yeah, it's funny. So if you're not into, if you want to start a software, don't do it unless you have a technical founder um, or someone technical partner who can help you, you know, manage that area of it. Uh, and it's, and it's, it's, you got to be in it for the long run or, you know, a few years kind of thing. It's not like a one in one out. Okay. Let me sell some software and leave then. Yeah. Kind of the, kind of the other side of that same coin of the it, it's flexible but because it's flexible it's always evolving and changing mm -hmm. and and so it, yeah if it's if it's easy to change and um and modify things then there's always going to be like you said like security threats that's always going to be evolving and that's kind of a kind of a scary thing that's not you, like you can't ignore that, you know, if you're putting something out there um, and trying yeah. to scale it. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. It's really like on the one hand, it's nice that it's really neat that it's flexible. On the other hand, it, it means that you're constantly having to to be on top of it. To maintain it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's an ongoing maintenance uh, versus maybe a physical product. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not experienced in it, but I imagine once you have the mold or you build something, something let's say it's a simple something relatively simple you get it out there and that's it then you just keep reproducing the same product i'm not trying to say it's simpler but like that's why each one each side has pros and cons right uh the hardware uh, physical product versus software but yeah bottom line is you gotta love what you're like you gotta be in something and love it for the long run i don't mean like for the rest of your life but at least you know for a couple of years not like don't think of i'm gonna go in build something and 
get out and fully and dedicated. Yeah. yeah. Go all in. Exactly. Do it for a few years, you know, one to two years. And then yeah. if it's not working out or whatever, then of course you can shut it down and uh, et cetera. But, Agreed. Yeah. 100% man. And, and as we wrap up this episode, honey, if you can get, if, leave our listeners with one piece of advice and you might've already shared it, but what would that be? I would say start sooner than later. Um, one thing for me, I wish I started a lot sooner. Uh, I was nervous. I didn't build a software. I didn't do this. I never done it before. I don't have the audience. You know, there's a lot of like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the thing is, you'll never know. You'll never know until you take that first step and you'll learn and iterate as you go. So don't wait for all the stars to align. Just take the first step. And that may attract the right business partner or, or whatever um, to get the process going. But you won't learn until you do. So don't try to read up and then say, I'm going to read everything before I start. Learn this piece, get your foot in the door, start the first step, hire a developer or find a business partner or whatever you're trying to do. Take that first step early and don't wait for everything to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, that that you hit the nail on the head right there. And I mean, you heard it here, guys. Start sooner rather than later. And that's a wrap for this episode. But from the both of us, Hani, man, we want to thank you for taking the time into your day to helping us add value in what we're doing on our podcast. Totally my pressure. I loved it. Yeah, it's really been a pleasure to have you on, man. Um, and thank you all so much for listening to That Entrepreneur Life. To learn more about what Hani is working on, check out hanimora.com. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe to our podcast and don't forget to download our free ebook at thatentrepreneurlife.com. Also, if you're interested in having us do some mini masterclasses this season, uh, this year, please contact us through our website and let us know. Yeah, for sure. And thanks for continuing to support what we do as entrepreneurs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Thanks for listening to That Entrepreneur Life podcast. Be sure to visit thatentrepreneurlife.com to join the conversation, access our show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode as we continue to add value. Until next time.